A sheet of paper gives order to commerce, provides a base for form of art. It is a preserver of the idea of a genius. It transmits the experience of eons to the world. To it, we can find the noblest and sweetest of our soul's emotion, and via a simple sheet of paper, we awaken those same sentiments in the hearts of others. Paper, having facilitated the art of communication, should be considered as a product that has, more than any others, contributed to the improvement of mankind. Bonjour, or I should say buongiorno. Uh, the quote I just uh, read was a quote from uh, Giuseppina from Fabriano, who is an art historian and wrote a book on the history of paper and how important Fabriano was at the, in the Middle Age, in the 13th century, with the invention of paper. My name is Pierre, and I'm uh, the co-founder and CEO of Savoir Faire. But more important today, I'm the, uh, I represent Fabriano in North America and uh, I'm very proud. I'm very proud to work with a company that has such history. Can you believe a company that is 750 years old? How many of those companies do you know? It's very unique and uh, I've worked with them for many years and developed things trying to express, to communicate their history, their passion, their uh, quality but also to work with them to make sure we deliver and update the quality of paper to the level of the American artist needs and with the different trends. It was in 1264 that the first paper in Europe was made in, in the town of Fabriano. Fabriano is actually a town, it's a city uh, in the middle of Italy, not far from Ancona. And, uh, there were some people, some sailors coming from Ancona and went to the mountain near Fabriano and started to make paper with cotton. And they invented a lot of things. One of the things they invented was first the watermark. That was a way that you can uh, identify who made the paper because at the time there was all handmade. So there was dozens of dozens of individual paper makers around the river and you would do a little watermark. Another thing that Fabriano has invented that changed the possibility of making paper was the uh, hydro beater, which basically a way to break the fabric because at the time the first sheet of paper were made out of rag. Literally, you know, the rag you would collect in the cities, people would give away their old clothes, sheets, you know, you would buy it for very, very cheap, and then you would recycle them, wash them, and then beat them to get the fiber, to mix the fiber with water, and that will lead to, to paper making. But the third thing, and that's the most interesting part from an artist's point of view, is they basically invented the concept of sizing, both internally and externally. Prior to that, paper that was found in the old Chinese empire, there was no sizing. So paper was actually almost useless. You can write on it, but you couldn't preserve it. They were hidden in boxes. So what Fabriano invented, it's the fact you put internal sizing, you know, made from vegetable fiber, sometimes potatoes or things like that, that would kind of, kind of a very, very soft glue to keep the paper together. But their biggest invention that still stands today is the surface sizing, which is so important for particularly watercolorists. And, um, and that at the time, and still now, you know how Italy is known for their leather, and there was a lot of tannery, you know, where you would uh, treat the hide of animals to make leather. Well, they found that the, uh, the leftover after preparing the hides, would make that gelatin glue type of, and they decided to use that and to apply that on the surface of the paper that would protect, would make the paper archival, 
but more important and still again and I will show it later how it gives a good absorption not too much a little but not too much so you can do watercolor and sustain when you put water it doesn't dissolve the paper so that was a major invention that was actually talked about by Michelangelo in the 15th century, he actually wrote about it. We have a letter from him who expressed his gratitude to the meal to have able to develop a paper that would permit artists to have archival work that they can carry and they can keep for forever. In order to improve, we've changed. We don't use animal sizing anymore and we've developed a new formula and recipe to have a non-animal surface sizing and <coughs> that's we believe it's more archival, it's more consistent, it's more even, it ages better, it doesn't yellow, it doesn't smell, so there's a lot of advantages. But why did we do that? What can we do different than what already exists? There was some big name, brand name of paper that were well to do, good paper, but I want to bring a little extra. So the things we brought was the non-animal sizing, a vegan paper sort of thing. And with that, to try to create the best, you know, it's a very delicate balance between you need some absorption, but not too much. The color needs to sit on the surface, so it's bright and luminous and lively, but it has to be a little bit inside, so that how to define that perfect absorption, it's a very challenging, you know, when you have colors and water on paper, it mix, it change and all that. So the importance of paper is huge. So I want to make sure we made a forgiving paper, meaning that you can lift off, you can scrub, you can go back, things very important for artists. So when we designed that, um, that sizing that with that in mind, that and we want it to be a little whiter. So we have, we're very proud because we've developed the whitest watercolor paper, cotton based, without using any chemical, any optical brightener, any bleach, because everything at Fabriano it's environmentally correct. We feel very strongly it's hydro powered, no chemicals, no of this, and also because it's uh, more archival. Today, we're just going to show you a few little samples, but I'm not here to teach you how to paint, because you guys will teach me maybe someday, but I uh, just want to talk to you about the material and how, you know, what I know and what it can do. Uh, and today we just speak cold press. Cold press, which is the most, uh, the medium textured. You know, you go from hot press, which is very smooth, and we say at Fabriano, we have we are the hottest hot, but it's true, we have the smoother hot press. We have a surface very unique that actually came under my watch called soft press, which is between hot press and cold press. Cold press is the one we have, medium texture. And then we have rough, which is very, very texture. And we have the roughest, roughest rough. So uh, but today we're just going to go with... Uh, uh, cold press. So here, and just to give you an idea of the colors here, I brought, this is the extra white. Know that we don't call it bright white because bright white could, you may assume that bright white have brightener. We don't want to be bright. We are extra white. And then this is the natural white and the natural white which replicate the original color which is an off-white a little warmer cast. This is the way the paper was for 100, 100 years. So if you want to be traditional, you use a traditional white. If you want to be a little more baldy and depending on your work, uh, artists go back and forth. So today we're going to stick to just cold press for just a matter of simplicity. Taking some little blue here, you know, on the uh, French ultramarine, you know, yeah, between French color and Italian paper. Uh, and then with a nice scroll uh, brush and here. So 
basically what you want is you want the paper like I said to absorb it to take it it doesn't destroy the paper you see how the paper doesn't buckle is very stable dimensionally stable and how it absorbs you can see how it dries but very regularly you know depending of the paper you use sometimes you have irregular irregularity which is a nightmare for watercolorists you want to do a sky or sea and start saying little white dots or things so and uh, you can do this and then I will I just did that about 10 minutes ago just for the camera thing to show you so this is you know just a couple of uh, things you see how even you see how regular the colors are there is no dots no change in shade and I wanted to show you how sometimes if you want to go back it's called the lifting and there's different technique you can do that different way you know I, I do that with a this so just a regular bristle brush but how you can take you see you can take away here you can take a napkin if you want up look how much you see this is a very staining intense blue see how we can pull it off so in one on one hand it absorbs but not too much so you can take it out so this is the kind of uh, effect you like I mean how do you say it's, the, it's not an effect I mean you're making an effect but uh, the kind of paper you want to be resilient and forgiving that makes it much easier for you so another thing you know and you can do wet and wet wet and dry I'm not an expert on that I'm just note from the paper side from the material side not as an aesthetic technical artist but what people also like to do sometimes is also to go wet and wet and for instance you see how and that's very important things are working here you want the water and the color to experiment with one another and you see how it moves it goes there so you need to be able to have a lot of water and it stays on the surface but it still penetrates and it works you know you can move it you see you can do different thing and then he would look, look, look at this look look how beautiful how the color mixes here how it's uh, just perfectly you don't have I irregularity and you can leave the the color play and be free on your piece of paper with no constraints you know since I thought we we're on a cooking show you can even go back we'll so take a little while to dry but I'll put it some we can even experiment with some uh, with a little bit of uh, salt just want to show you a couple of things maybe I'll show you one more hold on how you can do an edge yeah, I'm gonna show you it that's a very unique color it's called a Chinese orange and uh, I'm gonna show you how it goes you see the edge that's very important also how the water let the color have this how, how two colors mix after it's dry you see this is that even line very even with no uh, those are a lot of uh, things delicate Fabriano one of the unique thing of Fabriano is we have the three main method of making paper so you have handmade so it's still made at Fabriano after 750 years then at the beginning of the 19th century late 18 beginning of 19 with the industrial revolution we're able to invent uh, a technique called mold made mold made if you want it's a machine that replicate 
the handmade process, but in a mechanical way, but it's still slow and still gives some of the attribute of the handmade paper. And then you have the third, which is for, called Fordunier, the French word, uh, an engineer that makes or machine-made paper. So Fabriano is the only one who have those three methods, so it's very interesting. Today what I'm showing you is Artistico. So Artistico is the mold-made paper, 100% cotton with internal and external sizing. Those are the feature. Why is it so important to have mold-made? When you make paper, basically you have fiber, like in that case cotton fiber, which are longer than wood fiber. That's why it's good for the art. The longer the fiber, the stronger the paper is, the more abuse and the more archival it is. But also, when it's handmade, the, f there is the fiber takes a direction. When you shake it by hand like that, you know, the fiber gets intertwined, so it makes the strongest paper ever. When the opposite, when it's machine made and if you have those fast photodium machine that goes very fast, all the fibers goes in one direction. So it's called the grain direction, but that weakens the paper and you can try that. If you take a sheet of paper machine made and you can tear it off on the sand in the direction of the grain, it's very easy, no strength. If you go the other way, it's tougher. So mold made is kind of in between. It allows, it's much slower, and it shakes in a way that allows the fiber to be intertwined. So when we say mold-made paper, it's not just a, a feature just for, for a sales pitch, a sales pitch it has really some mechanical interest. So that's why when you look for your watercolor paper, 100% cotton, at least some cotton, and mold-made gives you the top. Mold made, 100% cotton, acid free, linen free, chemical free, animal free. You know, this is our offering today on Artistico. And um, on that note, go paint!